Good morning. About 24 years ago, I gave a lecture in the very same auditorium on the occasion of Golden Jubilee of TFR at 2012. And the Platinum Jubilee. Third person is Andrea uh, Nawal. I think uh, in 30 years ago, I had a chat myself for the team design committee of her thesis. I think she has pretty precise to remember it. Yeah, but not my bad memory. But the ones are the rest. She had a chat person. But you have a list of her job, I suppose. Except that you will crash away and you have to stop now. So, halfway through giving you a look, crash away. Okay. Now, originally my topic was uh, uh, superconductivity, which I said well and good. Uh, I did something on superconductivity, so I took it without reservation. And when I discovered it, I don't know what went on in the other land. There's no one who suspects speaking about Chinese metaphysics, okay? So I felt it is my duty to see that. Uh, uh, the conventional activity of the uh, is represented reasonably. So I think I would like to do. Okay. I'm not sure I've done justice to the matter. Uh, and another thing, uh, considering this kind of ideas, I am also likely to be informal. I understand that this lecture is being broadcast on YouTube. Okay. And uh, I'm not very good at this social media business. Uh, so I hope nothing wrong gets broadcast. Uh, and what I would like to tell the organizers is that for hardware purposes, I'll be happy to provide an editor of the copy of whatever I would like to say with proper information, not that the hardware medicine, hardware uh, material, and not this YouTube uh, that whatever may happen to it. Actually, the ideal person to talk on this occasion would have been a similar example of the extraordinary Chinese metaphysics, who has done extensive work. And Professor Ramakrishnan, who has made impactful work uh, in the low temperature physics. Okay. Uh, what I've done, I believe, uh, will present and uh, give a talk due to their personal commitments. So I will try whatever I can. I do hope for archival they would give the proper information. On an occasion like this, one likes to go back in time. And the first thing I went back in time was how I looked at 20, 75 years ago. Uh, uh, of course, I was born before uh, TFR was born, and evidence exists of that in my home. But I don't have a good archival section in my home. So I went to TFR archive and found what the oldest I can get, and that's what I would like to post now. So that is why I asked. The contract is not good. So uh, that's why I'm looking at. It reminds me of the then film hero Devanan. Uh, okay, the next best thing is my oldest equipment. I do not know whether anybody wondered how old the equipment we have. I said, I am going to be a little uh, random and so on. To, I said, I don't know whether I am talking about condensed matter physics or reminiscing my old experience. Uh, to repeat of uh, archival, I will give a proper material later. Uh, when Golden Jubilee TFR was uh, trying to set up an archival section, uh, they brought some nice uh, museum like, uh, you know, that cupboard or whatever you want to put the glass thing and so on, put a bulb inside, and they are putting inside the thing of our annual reports. I felt that's not really archival. Uh, I'm since many things I worked with my hands, I never uh, leave them. So there's a lot of old things were around me. I said I'll give you. So one of the things I put here, I guess would be the oldest one with the oldest earliest accession number, this is a hair hygrometer. It is there, these things I have kept on the backs of the Auditorium fire nicely hidden behind posters. Whoever is curious can go and have a look. And it turns out that, except for three items, two glass blowing things and one given to Professor Mathur, a small ion source uh, gadget, all else are put by me. Uh, 
of which I will show one and mention about another one. Uh, then I was just trying to see whether this technique has gone wholesale uh, outdated because now you have the electronic sensors and so on. I find that there's considerable discussion in the uh, website on the hair hygrometer and even suggested on school experiment for that. People who are curious can go and look at that. So in that one, I put a tuning for oscillator. Crystal oscillator didn't exist at that time. We made our own component counter. I will flash a side of the person who was behind all these things, very, very important person. And I put four generation of uh, the counters, the gamma ray counters. Uh, someone was mentioning yesterday, all our computation went with uh, uh, punch tape, punch cards, but mine was even earlier. I had a um, punch tape also there. And at that time, I put one slide rule also, borrowed from Professor Mathur. My own slide rule I have kept there. There was no calculator exit at that time. And uh, all these things you can see there. Now, let me see what next I do. Where this uh, pointer works from here? Or where is the detector for the pointer, please? Yeah. Anyway, my topic I said nuclear physics is superconductivity. It so happened that much of the origin here centered around uh, nuclear activities. One was the nuclear magnetic resonance, even though there was no radioactivity, the condensation of nuclear exists. Then the nuclear spectroscopy. Uh, which originally was uh, uh, originated for looking at the nuclear, nuclear decays, etc. I am happy that uh, Professor Pill will be giving me a talk after that. So whatever I am messing up, he will clean, clean up uh, uh, during his talk. Um, and then it turns out that when they have this angular correlation and its effect with the internal fields, become a solid state tool. Then of course, Mossbar spectroscopy, about which I will say a few things. Um, also a nuclear tool but was extensive for solid state investigations. And um, so that is a nuclear origin. And before what I will do is I'll start with uh, the NMR because that was the fundamental thing. Uh, and then I'll say a little bit about Mossbar spectroscopy and then end my talk with uh, three highlight uh, uh, contributions because we said landmark. So maybe we are supposed to talk what are the landmark results that happened here. That is Professor Dharmati and uh, uh, Hosur made my life uh, easy by talking about him. Therefore, I'll skip this slide. Um, uh, this is from Vijay Raghavan who followed Professor Dharmati. He built the first NMR spectrometer, I am told. Uh, incidentally, Professor um, Vijay Raghavan is uh, still active and uh, with his uh, daughter at US and he is in touch with him more or less on a daily basis. Part of this part was uh, directed by me, so to speak. Um, so he made the spectrometer himself. Uh, it seems that they got a mag from Switzerland and then uh, used war surplus to make uh, the electronics and uh, detected uh, sodium uh, resonance. And he was very happy that he could see the um, sodium resonance in sodium hydroxide. Now, this is a slide which is little distant, I have put because of the uh, early day. Uh, again, Hosur yesterday remarked that the MRI was uh, uh, declared on this very stage. And it so happened at that time, the uh, LMR people, this is Chaugli, whom you are seeing, uh, and Kasturi was there at the time. He was also interested in biological sample. They were already investigating biological sample using NMR. And then uh, the Nobel Prize uh, uh, winning scientist, uh, Lotter Bayer, he visited the section and he seemed to appreciate it. Uh, just before his talk, and then in the talk, he declared uh, his MRI. I, I think I saw a Google's uh, write up somewhere that his uh, conference contribution actually was a poster to start with. And later on, seeing the importance they convert into a plenary talk, somebody can verify and confirm that this story is true. Okay, this was some of the early pioneers of NMR Professor Gupta, Professor Malik. Uh, v. Nagarajan, he did zero field NMR. Uh, that is Chaugule, who was uh, behind a lot of instrumentation and support activities uh, in TFR. Uh, at the, the earlier version, perhaps that uh, uh, 14 megahertz NMR spectrometer for the solid state investigations. 
Okay, this is a variant spectrometer which uh, did a lot of uh, NMR bulk activity. I have listed all the members of that time. Okay, and since there was no other technique available, almost all of them were working on NMR for something or the other, the entire bunch. And the one which I put at the bottom, uh, they were uh, earlier and they left much earlier. Uh, DLR, Shetty, Vyasra, Saraswati, Mungurwadi. Uh, BK Basu was working on ultrasonics because as a condensed matter, I just put it there and many more I must have left out. Now, one of the earliest contributions from them was that one could see the uh, S electron density at the nucleus and then from there, then the polarization of D electron and this, which in turn has an effect on the S electron density. From there, one could detect the solid state property at the nucleus was an important thing in RPT5. And it is, I think, formed a part of Professor Malik thesis. And this uh, was uh, done under the direction of Professor Vijay Raghavan. So it's a very, very important work. The next important thing that happened, um, because I am on NMRs, so I am jumping and uh, skipping in time, was the NMR in copper nucleus where at that time our interests had shifted to rare earth intermetallics. And uh, uh, this was uh, days of uh, the rare earth valence of cerium, europium, and yttribium, shuttling between two valence states. And again, its effect on the copper nucleus could be seen. And this considered the first uh, such example of solid state valence fluctuation seen through NMR. Therefore, this is a well-received result from TAFR. I think this formed a part of Prasambhat Kumaran thesis. And now come the, the, the point of condensed matter physics. It is Professor Vijay Raghavan who really um, took a lot of pain and interest in trying to make uh, this condensed matter physics. At that time, it was called solid state physics because only part of the activity that it, it established well and grew up. Um, he had an extraordinary knack of uh, getting people together and manage them. Uh, it, it is a special skill, part of which I think I have acquired from him. At that time, since yesterday, uh, Rosu was mentioning, the original the group was called Helium, Electron, and uh, Nuclear Magnetism. Um, then it got split into three. One and went under Balwinger Traman, Chemical Physics 1, one under Kanekar as Chemical Physics 2, and then uh, uh, the third one under Professor Agwan as solid state physics. Uh, I didn't know when the department went, even though I was there. Pinto tells me this uh, 1997, when the then solid state electronics, and then we had a subsection called my material science, and then solid state physics merged into the current department of condensed matter physics. Okay, since I talked of nucleus, uh, I must also talk about my boss. I started my career. Uh, in nuclear spectroscopy, and that was Professor Tosar, uh, who are the head there. Incidentally, Baba ensured that he gets prominent people who all worked with Nobel laureate. Dharmaite worked with Felix Bang, this gentleman worked with Kai Sigman, and uh, one more, um, which as I move along, I will tell you. Um, so, this group was established to study nuclear spectroscopy, beta ray spectroscopy, etc. But then around uh, 1958, Mosbar discovered the famous effect. I'll skip the other detail there. And then in 1960, I think, uh, um, Pound and Repka used Mosbar effect uh, in, in confirming the Einstein's uh, relativity that there were redshift and the gravitational field. That really pushed the thing uh, very uh, high in the popularity. And then it so happened that uh, 14 kV radiation of iron, commonly occurring, uh, element and uh, you have huge number of iron compound. So Mosbar spectroscopy became very popular and TAFR being in the forefront, he latched around to the Mosbar uh, effect and did a lot of work. Interestingly, the one interesting uh, fine thing which I find is uh, around 1961, uh, that's here. Uh, now I discovered that this 26 kV gamma radiation can give you a Mosbar Resonance in 160 dy was done by S. Ja. This is not our solid state physics uh, SS Ja, but there was an earlier one. He later left 
for you yes, and did some work there. Now, because this work resonance is so popular, almost uh, everybody was working on it. You can see a lot of lists there. Dr. Fatehli, whom I joined. Uh, this gentleman, Prahala Sastri, I will tell later, so we to work with him. Girish Chandra had one, R.P. Sharma had one, H.E. Dabur had one, then K.R.P. Amrao from chemical physics had one, which later on Bhati took over, which Khosur mentioned yesterday. Multan in material science, it is possible I might even left out one or two. Uh, K.G. Prasad, Vandana's boss, was working with uh, R.P. Sharma. Now, I jumped disjointly because when I was on Mosbach spectroscopy, since I did a lot of work, I felt like uh, reminiscing something about the equipment we had at that time. Cooling the sample as a problem, ice was available. The next best was uh, dry ice, Sardar Carbonics, somewhere in uh, Pravadevi. We used to get dry ice and put chloroform or acetone and then go down to minus 27 or something and put the whole thermocol crest at BSO, I just then come with thermocol, okay, the whole, there's a constant mass per spectrometer mechanically moving, the whole thing will make a lot of noise and moves till we manage with something. Then we had gas crest at, I'm sorry that I'm not able to flash the, uh, the complicated helium crest at its at glass blower field. Incidentally, the glass blowing section of TAFR is a precious uh, department of the institute. I do not know the high energy physics people had told that uh, the counters were made there, and these days, of course, the importance has gone down, except perhaps for sealing samples. I do not know how much work goes on there. I did take some photograph, but I couldn't import, uh, incorporate in the one. And uh, incidentally, there is one glass crest in the uh, uh, glass blowing section. I reserved, asked them to preserve it. I strongly request that that be shifted to archives and preserved. Uh, then metal cold fingers, slow crest stats, and so on. Two of them I show, which are, uh, are one of them actually more important. Yeah, incidentally, this gentleman is my uh, very close friend. He, in the early days, people, as somebody mentioned, came from BRC tennis school. Maybe I came on two years more tennis school input was here after they, they stopped. He is a very good uh, electronics uh, person. He automated mass bar spectrometer, okay. And even had this glass divar automatically filling a small divar every two hours or so. Okay, very brave man. Okay, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. The mass bar spectrometer has become a speaker. There is a counter there. We will not go into that. The other one was equally complicated spectrometer. Uh, crest at this one. The, see, Kalpam, uh, long Telugu name, Kalakuri Malikarjan Rao. This is an interesting personality. He was my close colleague. I do not know. Anybody recognize him? Nobody would write. I don't think anybody would belong to that category. He came to uh, SSD. He, he, he came to SSD. He came to SSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good that at least one person remember. See, so he is the one who was three years senior to me, Nishtara Prahala Sastri. He could do anything as a genius, very rational scientist. This came start. Was uh, design was published in uh, nuclear instruments and methods. Wonderful thing. You see, the three there are three chambers. They all cook together with metallic stainless steel wires anchored. Okay, therefore the conduct heat conduction is extremely small. And then it's a it will suck helium from the other end and come out from here. It sucks up coal gas and does that helium crest. The sample sits there, and then this for. Taking the helium in, there is a stainless steel tube. Okay. There are no two benders available. The magic stuff was machined in the workshop. Okay. But much of the welding was done in the our lab. He even made a stand for it so we can rotate. We had acetylene, gas touch, everything in the lab. Uh, probably we did in the mezzanine floor. Okay, CM30. And uh, in the tube benders, what he did, he, he took a um, filled it the thing with water. And dip it in helium, in liquid nitrogen, it becomes ice, so it becomes solid. Then you blend it and then heat it up, the water melts off and use the tube. That is how the thing was done. Okay, wonderful technique. This crest I put in the uh, archive. So you can have a look at that. Uh, it really, the, it developed a cold leak in the center side when used for helium work, but this was my work horse uh, uh, for nearly 20, 25 years till. Uh, 
Professor Date left uh, TFR and his career started. I'm showing you the next one uh, that we uh, used uh, later on. This is another flow career set, but this was imported. And this also has uh, some memory, some electronics for which uh, uh, was a bit known. And uh, uh, Dinesh Sharma, I'm very happy, is here. Was an accomplice in the later part of it, uh, uh, getting into microprocessors. Incidentally, like, I'm very happy to tell you that I grew with uh, Intel. I grew Intel started with uh, four bit uh, uh, microprocessor, I think 8004 or something. Oh, no, 4004. And then it was 8008, then 8080, then 8085, and so on and so forth. Charming memories. Uh, no tutorial, nothing existed. Everything was done from uh, the manual. Uh, thanks, Dinesh for giving us that uh, uh, moral support. And here, uh, there's a Mockdown drive, uh, which is uh, not easy to see because of the contrast problem. And I owe this to uh, Professor Pillar. I think if he's here next time, he will tell you. But they were brought a drawing from uh, Groningen, I think. And then we machined it and constructed. Then I made some electronics. We one more slide, which I'll show you where you can see that better. And this became very popular. And uh, uh, many groups in India uh, took that know-how. And I used to think uh, I'm like Sankaracharya. There is uh, a pitam in every part of the India, that south, north, west. Uh, Kashmir, I didn't have. But it was there, including process here in our house lab. Uh, the other one, where uh, Dinesh has a larger contribution. Uh, this picture is not uh, for showing me, but this one, where I made the multi channel analyzer, incidentally, whenever these nuclear physics people do their uh, nuclear spectroscopy, you have to see the energy, therefore, to sc scan energy again. Incidentally, they have what is called a multi channel analyzer. The whole nuclear spectroscopy group had only one, and as you had seen so many names, all of them have to be only one equipment. So they would go to BRC, read it, and bring the thing back, and then use that multi channel to do that, and it would go from one room to another. Professor Vijay Raghavan used to call it, uh, yes, uh, that is Dhanapati uh, going from uh, one husband to another. Now, we have been using our, uh, all our Masbar uh, uh, data manually. I wish I had included that one. The person was to fit down on us, the entire time of 10 hours and recording this thing. Okay, so if I have the permanent material material, I'll put that photo there. So we also used to stick late, and it so happened ESL had made their first uh, multi-channel laser. And that when this door could actually take place from one room to another room, it would break down. Okay. The units used to come and repair that. So I used to be with them and watch. Then I discovered what I wanted is a very small part of the whole thing. So I made my room and that is sitting there. It was never enclosed in a box. It remained there, it served for me 20 years without problem. The triangle generator there, which was on a so called protocol of dead work, remained like 20 years, they all work. But the most important thing is the two ones going here and the socket here, you may not be able to see. I connected this by then, TFR across Cyber 360 and some of the labs got terminals. So there was a nice gentleman by name Dosadai. Okay, he, he was uh, accomplice. So I said, I will cheat the cyber computer by the keyboard signal. I built the keyboard arguing signal, every connect keyboard out to my data. So I could directly transmit data to central computer, perhaps that was one of the first computer automated experiment that we had. It's one of the charming memories I have. Now that Vandana has warned me, I'll skip to the remaining and push through. Now we had the, by then, the most active uh, work. We had all become sort of condensed matter physics. Ramakrishnan had many. Uh, interesting systems called charge and waves. Grover got into vertex dynamics, Malikander, and a lot of interesting um, intermetallics and borides. Some of them I would like to say. Nikon also had a mass bar spectrometer. He made magnetor is uh, superconducting magnet. I would just like to flash through them. This is the how the mass bar spectrum looks like. The x axis is velocity, which represents energy. You can see the resonance happening. In this system, another important system from TFR, which attracts a lot of international attention, is a compound called European palladium to silicon 2. This also became part of uh, some of thesis. Now, an equivalent thing which 
came from Malik group, but of a different variety. If you can just go back, here the signal simply shifts with temperature. Okay. This the valency remains fluctuating. And what you are seeing is the resonance is the average of the two valence states. Okay. It just keeps fluctuating right down to 84K, which what you are seeing. But here the valency is fluctuating, but it starts separating out into two separate charge states. And so much that at low temperature, the this divalent even have magnetic order. This was a equally interesting system which had a lot of international interest. You can see Professor Dharve. Okay, now that this, uh, if you want to do superconductivity, you have to have low temperature. That origin came from Professor Gilles Chandra. He worked in Moscow State University. I am not sure that because Kapitsa, I find this also in Moscow State University. Whether he worked with Kapitsa, I don't know, but certainly he worked in Kapitsa's lab. And he was the first man to produce millicolin in India. Again, it had a nuclear connotation. Okay, some bit of history. When I talk about nuclear origin, it so happened that it was Dharmati who started the asking for the rather ordering the uh, first helium liquefier. Uh, there's an archival letter uh, from him to Saha. January to 1962, he says that if they want to depute their person to see how the thing is being installed, they are welcome. The other one is equally interesting. He informed Baba saying that helium has been produced in the plant. So this for information, Baba says, I have seen it. Then he says for record where it went, I don't know. But uh, it's an interesting way the administration worked that day. Now, this is the um, helium liquefier uh, development here. The plant, I think I have wrongly labeled. The first plant was three liters per hour. The next plant they acquired was, I think, uh, 10 liters per hour. The third one which you see is at 13, 24 liters per hour. I think now they have 18 liters per hour flourishing. The important personalities we want to show here are uh, Professor Nigam is here. Uh, they are SC Agronomy Engineer of uh, LTF. This is Sekura. I want to come and say something a little more about him. Professor V. Nagarajan. These people were the ones who are hanging the thing in the most critical time in the mid -bear late 80s and beginning of 90s, really they had a hard time. Those kind of marketplaces would have, but they, they tried their best to do that. And when I take over, it is the Sakura who was really the normal person for me to do that. If Nigam is here, he would certify as of the importance of Sakura. I want to this occasion to propose that I would like to institute an award in his honor for a good technical uh, person of team FR. Okay, please remind me on that. I don't know one which is currently there. Pardon? Yeah, 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 okay. I said that there's a mix up there. Actually, I want to put the Collins one, two liter, but it got shifted up. So, all that you are correct in your lecture. Yeah. In fact, Pillay has been doing the same as everything and anything, let me tell you. Uh, it's a precious commodity in TAFR. Okay, this is the, how the helium progressed. Because helium has been sort of light plane for canal matter phases. We keep talking about helium, okay. Um, okay, this is a Professor Gish Chandra's publication in DA Symposium 1965 where he reports achieving uh, 10 millikelvin. Okay, I don't want to spend much time there. Okay, you can see, all I can tell you is that it is uh, detected by nuclear orientation and the value he quotes are here, 0 0.024 at this point, this is 0 0.01, okay, 10 millikelvin. This is a setup with the Professor Gish Chandra used the other for a very long time. And that is the electromagnet which you used. Incidentally, the technique is called adiabatic demagnetization. I don't have time to tell that. In fact, much of physics and technology I will not tell because the time is running short. I must project what happened. People who are interested can come and talk to me, or as I said, I am hoping to document them in hard copy. 
So here is a crash card which used to move inside the magnet, then they would magnetize it and then uh, switch off the magnet. Instead, if you have to do it very carefully, I'm told, it may take about 10 hours in this case. In the case of Ramke and Micro Kelvin, it takes two days to, to pull the magnet down, okay? So I'm not getting into those intricacies there. And one man who can tell you uh, a lot of stories about it, we should call him sometime, T.S. Radhakrishna, I don't know how many of you have seen him. Um, he worked with Professor Mendelssohn, the great man uh, who has written a book and is there in the TFR. People should read that who are interested. Best for Absolute Zero, wonderful book. Uh, he visited and uh, he invited him to Oxford. So he worked with him. And it so happened he also worked with Kabel, uh, who was a micro at that time, and Ramke also visited him. So anybody want to uh, know the histories of how low temperature was in his time uh, in the uh, late 60s, Radha is the man. I am trying to get him invited for a conference which uh, LTV is organizing. Now I am on to business now quickly. Um, some of the important things that did, uh, Professor Nigam made the first superconducting magnet. I think it is uh, uh, how much? Uh, five, 5 Tesla or 6 Tesla. Okay. And the thing is, it's a hard work. I believe Pillay also would know. Because after him, I think they also made one. One kilometer of neobium titanium manually bound. You have to wind it tightly, otherwise the windings will shift around and quench the magnet. Uh, but it was used and a lot of work has been done. Since I am supposed to show some physics also, I flashed this one. This lady is my colleague at Mumbai University, Radha. You may not know, I do not know whether she is in the audience. Yesterday she was there. Okay, the important thing as a piece of physics, later I talk about the so-called borocarbide, he can see this one, the superconductivity goes up, so to speak, and then trying to die down and then again pick up. This so-called re-entrance superconductivity, and that is what made this system a bit famous, about which I'll flash a slide again later, hopefully. Ah, this is my friend CRK Murthy, very, very important man for me, because I kept much of my thought processes discussing things with him. And um, he was a geophysicist who shifted to condensed matter physics because he on rock magnetism. Um, he made his own equipment. Um, uh, he worked with uh, Blackett, the only persons, again, uh, Professor Homi uh, Baba sent him to um, London to work with him. And I put one of his equipment in the archive, I think, and see. Professor Grover, if he is here, would know that he used this equipment. Did not work with Blackett, he worked in 60R Correct, guys, no, no. The Blackett came, sorry. The, the Blackett was the inspiration for the whole affair because he was interested in uh, continental drift. That was the idea, purely magnetism. Uh, so you know, CRK Murthy is, your lecture is already over, so you may correct it in the hard copies, anything more. That is Kandala, which everyone wanted to visit. Wonderful, yes, he is equally known. And there are some pond who used to make good with not much I know. Yeah. Okay, then come the STC. You see, um, uh, I do not know whether I mix up my slides. Uh, you may see it a little later. Um, 1986, uh, this uh, high temperature superconductive revolution came up where superconductive discovered at temperatures uh, uh, of liquid nitrogen. So people thought that everything going to change and a lot of money was being spent. Rajiv Gandhi offered 100 crores and uh, Professor Siyanara was the chairman of the funding committee. It was split into two, Professor Ayungar was uh, the chairman of the applied committee and Professor Vijayaragavan was the chairman of the basic science committee. So a lot of uh, money flew into TFR at that time. We acquired some uh, uh, equipment. So let me see whether all those photographs here, yeah. So we got a squid magnetometer, a phi Tesla, a vibrant sample magnetometer, 12 Tesla. And then we have a PPM, a physical property measuring system, which could measure everything, AC susceptibility, heat capacity, resistivity, and maybe uh, thermo EMF and so on and so forth. There was also a cross circuit refrigerator for AC susceptibility, which is missing in the slide. Uh, I don't think Professor Paulus got it out of the uh, uh, STSC finding. But since I couldn't get him in my sequence of events, but he had a dilution of feature much later, 
uh, out of which uh, a wonderful uh, quantum mall effect was uh, uh, result was produced. I think was Arora would mention in his talk. Okay, I may flash the result there. Yeah, beautiful. You can see. Uh, okay, here comes Grover. Uh, he dedicated his life to voltage dynamics. He was in Japan. I think uh, Ito dedicated one instrument. He was very happy because in TOFR, you would get turned once in a month. We had only one speed at that time. And it doesn't work. I am not really competent to comment everything. But what I want to present here is the amount of detailed work that Grover and Ramakrishnan did. See here the number of points. I think they were all taken. I think every uh, maybe next one has a third uh, point one millikelvin accuracy, and every uh, ten millikelvin they were had a point something of that kind. Okay, see here. This one you can see the reduced temperature range 98, 97. That is just within 1% they cut and then got the so-called p figure out of which they would say how the vertex lattice is melting or solidifying and so on and so forth. Ah, this is what they said. They said they discovered Nelson's loaf. See, this is a Fins diagram and that it, it, I do not know whether Grover could correct me. It goes from liquid to solid and then it goes one way and then again it returns back. So this is a so-called reentrant uh, business which was uh, a critical requirement for the existing theories then. While well, I did, I want to talk about this uh, two slides on material science because a lot of activity went on at that time. Professor Multani started the, along with Patankar and my friend Shastri, whom I was saying. Okay, the Shastri end, actually, I, I skipped. I would like to use this occasion to say that he did a variety of He did Mosler spectroscopy. After it, he said, no, no, I want to change over. Then I think he went to here. And then he said, this is not enough. Then he went to solid electronics. There he tried to make a calculator. I was accomplished for that. We had a calculator about a rack long. Okay, we did many things there. By then technology changed. DCM came with their computer calculator and then went off. Then he went to uh, ESIL as a consultant for that. Then he went to Zambia for about two years on a teaching assignment. He came back as a Guruji. Finally, he's a full-fledged uh, uh, Guruji with international following. He has an um, institution called uh, Devipuram in Vaishakhapatnam. Unfortunately, he passed away three years ago. But uh, there's a big, big uh, institution there who are religiously uh, inclined. They can go and uh, uh, see the clip. The puzzle really for me is that how come a totally rational scientist could go totally differently, spiritual, and so on. And I tend to believe maybe there's something spiritual there. Okay. Vandana is further warning me. Let me rush through finally. Okay. Okay, now here is my the the answer of the material science. Since I'm focused on superconductivity, my present colleague at uh, um, CBS, Sangeeta Bush, whom many of you know, Pushan student, uh, she worked on this uh, uh, fine particles and showed that the uh, type one and type two behave differently. Uh, when you make them into fine particle, about which I don't want to get in now. Now the final will make maybe two minutes each on the three landmarks because it's a landmark one. Uh, director, uh, I think at the time it was Sandeep Trivedi, he mentioned uh, a lot of landmarks in Kernel's matter physics, he mentioned two. One, a work which with I was said, the so-called uh, Naturally, borrow carbonate. Other one was the discovery of superconductivity by Ramke at 0, 005, about uh, 500 microkelvin. Uh, Sambat Kumaran, uh, extensive work, okay, enormous work he had done. And he informed me that this compound is gaining international prominence. So I would like to say a few things about that. These three and one line. That is Sambat Kumar's lab. See, he states that in this material, this is a comparison material, you can see an uh, Hall effect taking place as the temperature is reduced. When the field is zero, the resistance goes up, instead, now the resistance would come down. When you apply the field, the resistance comes down like a metal. This is like a superconductivity. When you have superconductivity, you have something 
in the heat capacity, when you apply field superheat is killed, it behaves normally. It does something crazy like that. And then net result is he got this anomalous Hall effect over this field range, okay, at 4.2 K. Now, this was somewhere in 1998, uh, I think. Now, now, 2019, there's a paper on this very same material in found, claiming that they have found this topological all effect in frustrated uh, triangular lattice magnet. The net crucial observation is the same, which I will flash in the next one. Yeah. You can see the similarity against magnetic field. So, some of the strongly feels that he should get the recognition for discovering this aspect, about which he has sent a Kahneman archive, uh, which I reference, I will, I will put there, you can see later. And the other important thing which I have done was discovering a material called uh, terbium 2 barium cobalt oxygen 5, where we find this, this is temperature, this side is dielectric content and each one you are applying a field. You have a um, ferroelectric material which responds to application of magnetic field. These are called ferroelectrics and this is happening at the highest temperature and therefore he believes this will be an important material for application. These two must be noted. Now, this is a Bismuth work of Ramki. How much time, madam, I have? Five minutes. Chalo. So the important thing is here, Ramke's work, I call it as a complete science because number one, he proposed the problem, he developed the technique to solve the problem and solve the problem also. So the entire thing he has done and as I told in his uh, um, several function, it really requires a lot of courage to think that much money, that much time, that is effort. You must spend about a decade just trying to achieve the micro Kelvin, which itself is an achievement. And then having done that, put bismuth in that and then go and get measure and establish. Fantastic work, let me tell you. I will skip this slide because too many things there. This also I'll skip. This just shows the complexity of the setup, okay. What are things sitting there? Uh, you have to have a 1K you achieve. So incidentally, he achieves the millikelvin by standard so-called dilution refrigerator. The remaining are designed and developed by him. You achieve the normal milli Kelvin or the other one, Girish Chandra one, I said, derivatic demagnetization. We use a paramagnetic salt. Here we are doing adiabatic demagnetization on nuclear magnetic moments, okay? Nuclear magnetic moment. It is there they get cooled. Now the nuclear temperature should go to solid state temperature. That's a problem by itself. And he waits for, I think, two days before this. Solid can really get cooled. These are all technical detail. I don't want to get into that. He achieved 39 micro Kelvin. Fantastic thing. I think well, about four magnets are there. Two of them may not be working. So in that time, we should really be happy that two of us are doing their basic work. Now here is a basic result. You can see the supercar occurring. Okay. It's about 0.5 milli Kelvin, 500 micro Kelvin. Simply getting the a resistant drop incident, this is susceptible to not resistance. Okay, diamond is you are seeing. Simply seeing as a transition is not a proof, it should respond the way superhand would do, which you do by applying field. Okay. Now, the other important thing you should see here is see the amount of field is putting four micro Teslas, 30 hours. Okay. I hope my number is right. Hmm. And then the such a small field, and you can see the thing shifting. And if you want to have an effect of this field, even the earth field should be shielded. So shielding magnetic field itself is another crazy thing in this setup. And he did all the thing and uh, what is the impact? He says that normal metals have roughly like one C electron per atom, okay. In this case, the carbon is so small, there's one electron about 10,000 atoms, okay. The electrons are too few, for supercurrent, the electron must pair up. Such low density, one in 10,000, will they talk to each other and produce superconductivity? This is a question mark. So that is the problem which has posed to the world. This is what it says. Results mark a new episode in the history of supercurrent with the editorial comment in the science uh, 
article. So now can come to the final one. I kept it final because even if it say anything, nobody is going to complain. Uh, so we want to think like any professor Gupta suggested that we should work for in the series of uh, uh, rare earth nickel for boron. And then we went into the result business. Now these are the two students who really worked hard for that. Uh, this Chandan Majumdar, he is now a professor at science and nuclear physics. He is a professor at uh, IIT Kanpur. He should have got uh, more reward than what he got, but somehow, since being what it is, it didn't work out. Part of the fault might have been mine. My favorite on this thing is just I said that uh, uh, the business superconductivity had its own uh, structure of science. Uh, uh, again, this stuff one surprise. I tell them this is a classic case of a scientific discovery is made. I'm not going to tell all of them here, I only tell the steps. Size of a favorable system, luck. Systematic hard work, experience, literature survey, conjecture, verification, consolidation, killer instinct. Our friend Ramchandran Baji, I believe, will be here. He is the one who wrote this saying that they are like killer instinct. That story is later. Progress, birth of a subject. The work had all this company with classic case of. Uh, but then I'm not going to talk about it. What I'm happy about when I wrote this uh, article in Current Science, editors seem to have taken a note of it and he marked, remarked in this editorial comment. So there is some truth in that. Now I'll quickly flash one or two slides and wind up. Uh, okay, so this is how the whole thing started. We are measuring that one. We got a small cut here, but not zero. This susceptibility had a small variation, but not diamagnetism. When it went into low field, there was a diamagnetism. We said there is uh, some superconducting signal, but we did not go into zero, what it is. So we went to the trade. Any children, repeatability is important. We tried four samples. We did get them. But the interesting story is here the first sample had a much larger dip, 1 to 0.7. Other guys are only 5%. Why so? I will not tell you now. This for a graduate student uh, lecture. Peak capacity is supposed to have a jump across the TC. Nothing happened here, okay. Leave it at that. I'm, I hope people can see who are the authors. We went after it. I tried to crack what the problem was. We had all sorts of allies. I felt it's an impurity. In three samples, we got this small signal. But still, resistance was not going to zero. So I felt that the thing might be something else. I guess it could be carbon. Why I guess I will not tell you now. How I got the carbon also is an interesting story. I will not tell you now. So once I put carbon, the resistance went to zero. Okay. So that was the proof that I got the thing solved. The final proof, you can see now the heat capacity anomaly. In this sample, becoming much larger. So we knew that the compound is YNA2, but we could not figure out what boron and carbon. Bell lab corrected three months later and found the compound to be B and C is 2 is to 1. So they made the compound YNA to B2C. Now you can see that heat cap has jumped going more. And when you make a single crystal, it becomes a classic superconductor with a straight jump, and you can do other calculations as well. So why A to B to C was the one. Bellac made the whole series. Uh, they really made an impact. So there was so much, it is on the famous ITC K, the first uh, transient temperature report to Bedmers and Miller for 39 Kelvin. Okay. Nobody noticed for a few months, somebody picked it up and then it went to. More than 90, the record was around 135 and the pressure 165 and so on. So anything which is coming up is exciting. This film is replaced nickel by palladium. It went to 23K, which was highest for metals at that time. So nature said, it's a new route to high TC. And then that became a whole news. Everybody went helter-skelter. All metal faces uh, went about melting sample. Now, as I said, this is going to the end of the step, which is called the birth of a subject, it found all sorts of things. 
I think about 40 compounds it forms with all sorts of properties. This is a list of compounds which others made, not we did not make it. And then the other interesting aspect was that this thing produced three, four compounds which are so called magnetic superconductors, which I told you the re entrant part. Okay. So the physics today article that this being a five box for that. And then we had an international conference, NATO, to uh, what should I say, compensate for their killing in war. They also hold scientific conferences. One was held on this discovery at Dresden that I believe was really a climax for it. And uh, now I'm coming to the last slide. So with that, I finish that one. I must mention something about uh, the present one, which uh, uh, I learned from Professor Hosur yesterday. I listed the present the bunch of people uh, from the department, from the website. All I can say that they, I find that they are exploring new lands and my best wishes to them to make new land, landmarks. Thank you, friends.